Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here at Black Hat. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here for our second day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. A lot of great action, talking to all the experts, all the security gurus, and of course, the company's making the news. We got Sam Curry is in the house, the CUBE alumni from 2010, one of the original CUBE guests of all time um, when we started the CUBE. Sam, great to see you. Now the CISO at Zscaler, which, you know, a, a company that's really kicking ass. Uh, zero you. trust. Uh, if, what's, the, what's the phrase? If it's, it's addressable, it's breachable? What's the, if, it, if, it's if it's reachable, it's reachable. If it's reachable, it's breachable. Yeah, that's right. Um, Welcome back to the Cube. Good, good to see you. It's good to be here. It's been well. It's been a while, generally. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, OG stuff from way back in the day. I mean, if you go back 15 years ago, you know, the dark web was on the horizon. There was a lot of security. It was well known. Botnets were just getting in. Cloud was ransomware was just starting. Yeah. Ransom well, actually, it had been around for a while, but it was just starting to take off commercially. You just started to see the scale of cloud coming, uh, and then that just just became just the chaos. We used to talk about private cloud. <laughs> private cloud. The journey of the private cloud. I think that was the year. V blocks. <laughs> yeah. Well, VMware is now owned by Broadcom, but again. That's a, a whole nother story. But security has been always been your wheelhouse. Yeah. So what I, I want to get your take on it. Looking back 15 years to now, we're still in a chaotic environment. The threats are there, product sprawls everywhere, thousands of vendors, thousands of products. CISO's life's realm, now risk management, you know, policy and compliance is a big part of it, continues to be. It's a lot of stress and a lot of chaos. Yeah, I think I can finally tell the joke I used to tell off camera with you, which was uh, I, I joked once when security became 8% of IT and it equaled storage. I joked with some execs at EMC because I was, of course, at, uh, at RSA, the security division of EMC. I said, when does it become EMC, the storage division of RSA? It did not go over <laughs> well in the States, right? And, uh, and so RSA got spun out because of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all my fault, not. Uh, I left in 2014. Okay, I'm just kidding. But no, I'm with you. Um, but the, yeah. the, the fact is that most of IT winds up on a commoditization curve, right? So when something is available everywhere and the quality is the same from mm -hmm. everywhere, it only differentiates on price. And what you wind up then is with consolidation, less vendors, aggregation of, of similar functions. You had it with ERP. You, 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 you see it in all the suites that emerge, right? It goes from best of breed to suites. And that's always the motion. The exception is cybersecurity. And that exceptionalism in, in our industry has, to some degree, pissed off execs in other spaces. They're mm -hmm. like, what's so special about you guys, right? Yeah. Um, and we sort of know there's something special about us, and we sort of sheepishly think there might not be. Mm -hmm. The fact is that we have an active and intelligent opponent. And it's that intelligence on the other side mm -hmm. that means that we never get to the point where the quality is the same everywhere. And so we have, at shows like Black Hat or at RSA or all the others, there's hundreds if not thousands of startups. And what they do that's different actually makes a difference in defense. And so you never get to the point where you consolidate everything under one vendor, you get one platform, and that's it. You, you brush your dust off your hands mm -hmm. until the cloud or something like yeah. it, like maybe quantum computing disrupts mm -hmm. you or AI or something like that. By all means, those can, those can change the game, but we are constantly having to innovate. We never get to rest on our laurels, and I think that's the difference. So. You talk about chaos in the last 15 years, it's things like zero trust that provide new paradigms and architectures that can change the game. And that's why I'm at Zscaler, by the way. I always look for where can I put my hand down that's going to have the most leverage and make a difference like that. But in the end, uh, that opponent's what makes the chaos. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and you know, I, I talk to execs inside and outside of cyber, right? So boards and those sorts of things. And they say, so when, when is the cyber thing going to be solved? I think we may have actually talked about that 15 years ago. <laughs> Never. You want to make it in that one new rack mountable solution. I'd love that, right? Yeah. But uh, some things it doesn't happen with. Um, in the rest of business, there are other areas like that. In legal, for mm -hmm. instance, you have intelligent opponents, their lawyers versus yours. In sales, you have their, their salespeople versus yours. So you can't say, oh, it's okay, we found the perfect sales pitch. We'll just sit back and make money now. Or you can't say, hey, we'll never be faced with a tort that's a problem. Likewise, you can't say mm -hmm. the risk due to intelligence trying to break the system in our infrastructure is done. Yeah. Uh, at least not yet. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you, you, you've seen many waves of innovation. Every once in a while you have that moment where there's general recognition that something's happening. We've got to apply new types of security. You know, just going back COVID 2020, Everyone's working at home. Who would have forecasted that we'd have to essentially do SD WAN and do <laughs> everyone at home 100%? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now you have well, that Sassy. Forced us. Yeah, you got Sassy, Zero Trust emerges out of that, that architecture. And so now we're in that moment now where generative AI is pretty clear to everyone that there is something there that needs to be looked at because when people bring their co pilots to the network, whether it's home or the office, 
that's another service area. So you have a moment where security will have to get refactored for mm. this next big wave. What's your view on that? Because there's, do you take the Band-Aid approach by putting on another thing from a startup? Do you want to platformize it? Is it a do-over? Um, what do you do? What's well, the, a, what's necessity your... is the motherhood, is a mother of all invention. And, and I mean that because we had zero trust before COVID. Um, you know, the, the, back in 2010, I actually talked to founders here at Zscaler from outside and said, I need fine-grained authorization at scale where every request is uniquely you know, handled. Later, John Kinderbog came up with the term zero trust. It wasn't long after, by the way. So it's existed now for a dozen years uh, as an idea, but it took a forcing function to make it happen. And the reason is that change happens because of leadership. It, it, if you just unleash the technology, mm -hmm. people will continue to do things the way they've always done them. If you look at, for instance, new new uh, tools on the battlefield, mm -hmm. until you actually need them, people don't use them, right? If you look at tanks in World War I, they didn't use them to make breakthroughs. They, they, they peanut buttered it, right? They kept fighting trench warfare the way they had fought for four years and disastrous results. And they didn't use tanks, for instance, or even air power the way they could have even as early as, as 1917, 1918. Um, that's what's happening here. And I think that what, we're, what we have to do is realize that we have to challenge ourselves and we have, to, we have to take leadership seriously and take these new breakthroughs and especially AI. Uh, everyone talks co-pilots. Okay, I'm, I'm good with that and co-pilots are important. <laughs> and, and, but how many companies started out saying, I'm doing a co-pilot, right? And, and everyone should do it. But the, the application for things like deception technology, mm -hmm where we finally actually make naming of things like files or um, passwords or things like that that really look like humans name them. We can make artificial traffic that looks like human traffic. We can create fake networks of people. Where's those ideas? Um, and I think that it, we're seeing it right now, for instance, in the Ukraine. We're seeing drone warfare being driven to the next level out of necessity, just like we saw with tanks in World War I. And I think the next few years is where, where the toolkit will be available and the opportunity exists for us to say, okay, take the gen AI and the other things coming in AI yeah. as a set of innovations and let's use them, not just just the way we've always used them, yeah. let's disrupt things. What are some of those disruptive enablers? Because obviously what you're getting at is thinking differently. I love that analogy of trench warfare and then you got tanks and then planes. There, what is the tanks and planes for us in cyber? Because you need a disruptive enabler. So you got to disrupt mm. what was before and enable the new. Okay. Um, Obviously, advances in silicon and compute and getting closer to the silicon is where the best AI companies are doing today, like the consumer one. So you're seeing more kernel developers, you're seeing a lot yeah. more closer to the hardware on one end. And then intelligent apps on the other where the data models are changing. So you're already seeing signs of the shift or mm -hmm. enablement. What's your view on disruptive enablement that's happening? I'm that, dangerous when you ask that question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ask no, the, you, look for the rebels. <laughs> Because you know, the, 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 in peacetime, we have managers who, uh, who, who smooth things over and they get rewarded perhaps for, they, we need them. They make things incrementally better. But in, in wartime, we need people that are going to go tabula rasa and truly transform. Um, if you look at, uh, if you, one of the reasons that I came to Zscaler is it, it, it says, hey, just because the RFC says everything has to be open doesn't mean it does. You can reduce your footprint. Mm -hmm. You can not accept the inbound request, right? You can become less visible online. Um, I did the same thing with personal firewalls nearly 25 years ago, right? So that you can shim a stack and say, well, there isn't a driver there, there should be one there. Let's go deep in the stack and let's, let's actually start filtering traffic there with, with policy sets. I was back in 97 and 98. And, um, what does a rebel look like now? Uh, well, a rebel, the a rebel is the person who's sitting off to the side who's a little bit awkward. Um, and you also need these managers who can come in and say, well, I don't care that we've built a policy set over a decade. You know, that the firewalls sit a certain way. Instead, they're going to go, if we were to start with a blank sheet of paper, and by the way, re-architecture is one of the dirtiest words in the English uh, yeah, language, yeah, yeah. but it's also one of the most necessary yeah, at the yeah. right time. And I think this is one of those times when you see a big disruptor coming in, mm -hmm. the first thing the company goes is, ooh, we don't want it. How do we keep it out? And then it's okay, well, we've got to embrace it. And then you get the sense that, well, it's business as usual. And that's the moment when you look for the rebels yeah. because they're chomping at the bit. In our industry and security, yeah. they're there. We had a few rebels on the cube this we, week. I'll tell you, Black Hat's the place where we come to party yeah. in DEF CON. There's rebels here. Uh, yeah, it's not just summer, <laughs> su su you know, summer camp for security. 
they exist in every company, and yeah. they want to be heard. You can you can do a lot if you really open your ears and pay attention. Yeah. It's interesting you bring up um, re-architecture because one of the things we've been having a lot of conversation with in our research teams and all over this is we're looking at a lot of the larger enterprises that went cloud, lift and shift, now they have full distributed computing architecture environments. Mm -hmm. And they have existing workloads, banking apps, and, yeah. and so they, they have workloads um, and they know the, what they are end to end. So the first step is let's infuse Gen AI into those existing apps and then they have to say, okay, what's our infrastructure needs, which is why all the actors at the infrastructure vendor silicon was seeing that play out. Okay, assume there's going to be GPU clouds yeah. and all kinds of things emerge, assume that happens. The next step is that will enable them to do something. And they're all talking about reset. They're thinking, okay, next 10 to 15 years, I need a foundation that we can build on. And they're looking at it from a clean sheet of paper. How do I deal with cataloging? Let's decouple data from the database. Why not? Yeah. Let's focus on a new kind of catalog. Maybe call it a That's smart what virtualization did for us when we finally understood it, right? And this I'll tell you, that wish list that you put up, uh, you, you, you should have been burying at the back of your computer, maybe somewhere. I'd say, you know, in a, in, in, a, in a drawer somewhere. It's time to dust that off. And if you find at the end of the project everything has been smoothed over mm -hmm. with like with sandpaper, and all you've done is you've reduced cost ten percent, and maybe you've increased your capacity to five to ten percent, you failed. Mm -hmm. the, this stuff is truly transformative. The numbers should look like seventy percent. Um, and if, you, if you're not approaching that or don't have an ability to reach there, you're not doing it right. I think the, w the way that what you want is to think about the outcomes and to think, how do I simplify my stack? Because, and, and you can still do, you can still do complex things without being complicated, right? I'm, so is the Zscaler customers like rebels? Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> um, and what's remarkable is you can tell everybody eventually is part of it, yeah. but you can, you, you have your champions, yes. right? And, and and they could be IT people, yeah, yeah. And they could be networking people, they could be cyber people, but it's it's truly remarkable when you find the believers because yeah. the energy and the passion in them is amazing. It's time to dust off the Steve I Jobs, the, the misfits, the rebels. You know, thinking differently is I don't really... mean in a Steve Jobs way, but yeah. Well, maybe that's what maybe, we... Maybe it is. Well, not like that because it's a different world, but I mean, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about, okay, flipping the script because it to make Gen AI work, it's a data-driven world and it's not and it needs low latency, horizontal scalability, and domain expertise in apps. True. That is a hard technical thing to do. But in cyber, we have another problem, which is that anything that is, I, I did this as a, an app, I did this as a presentation years, uh, a few years back with a guy named David Berliner called Mirror Chess, that any form of predictability or automation becomes a weakness when you have an intelligent opponent because they can predict what you're going to do. And there's ways specifically to avoid that. And so applications of Gen AI tend to work really well when they're very specific, yeah. like cogs in a machine. And then you can look at how does the machine coordinate those. And so it's a different application in cyber yeah. than it is in you know, yeah. ERP, as I said earlier, or in storage or in other areas. And so we have the meta problem of how is someone going to try and take advantage of this artificial yeah. intelligence. And that's an exciting problem. And the opponent way. is smart organized, funded, intelligent. And they may poison or they may they may do yeah. they may do, you know, kleptography or what have you. Um, it, it, this is a fun set of challenges, but we, as long as we're aware of them and we're aware of the tricks like with the case of mirror chess, how to avoid it, um, and what some of the privacy enforcing technologies mm -hmm. that are out there are. Uh, did another presentation on that with Elon Kaufman a few years back, still highly relevant yeah. in the AI space. This stuff is doable but it takes an open mind and actually talking to people outside your normal. How do you feel um, the industry, public, private partnerships and all that good stuff, how do you think we're doing against the adversaries? Better and, than I expected, by the way. Yeah, it seems, seems to be going well, um, relatively speaking. At least we recognize that they're intelligent, organized, funded, and aggressive. Yeah, well, so I, I, it's never fast enough, you know. Um, it's frustrating when you look around and go, well, if they just did this, it would work, and if they could just do this, but it's, the truth of the matter is the dialogue actually helps to determine what it is we're going to do you couldn't have known before, and everybody has to be part of it, but I've seen good leadership politically. I rarely say that, yeah. right? So um, things like the executive order on artificial intelligence had the right kinds of or, you know, outcome-oriented um, yeah. thinking. It was 111 pages, and most of that was not prescriptive, right? It was like, we need to get to this point in this yeah. way of doing it. And I've seen international collaboration, collaboration like between the US and the UK, that's kind of exciting. NATO recently spoke about how to do this as well and how to use the unique ability for NATO as buyers yeah. to come up with better systems for things like zero trust as well. 
So I actually think the right dialogues are happening, and I'm encouraged to see the pace at which it's happening, but it's never enough for me. Is there a point where we actually can identify statistically, oh, well, not 100%, <laughs> but pretty much where the threats are? I mean, at some point, is um, there a it's never finite? But or... it doesn't have to be. Okay. It doesn't have to be. I mean, look, um, zero trust is the goal, but even slightly less trust is a huge win. Slightly less risk is a huge win. Um, if I can raise the cost to break for a nation state, um, for hostile hackers, for cyber terrorists, for cyber criminals, mm -hmm. even a small amount, it's a massive reduction in yeah. pain and agony and damage to critical yeah. infrastructure, um, to actual people getting hurt or death, because um, that's real now, right? Yeah. We, we, small hiccups and interruptions in IT and in availability matter. Yeah. So you know what, if, if I can get 5% reduction in trust, it's a big. It's a big impact. So, one of the problems I have at these shows is we all, and I've been as guilty as this as anyone is. We all go, "Hey, I found a perfect way to do something," and we all cheer. And then someone says, "I found a corner case that breaks yeah. it," and we get depressed. It's yeah. like, yeah. no, you know what? Yeah. Does it meaningfully <laughs> move the needle a little? And that's if, a, that's a win. Let's keep doing that. Okay, I have to ask you because I haven't, I haven't you haven't been on the queue in a while. Quantum mm -hmm. uh, happened since mm -hmm. we last talked. One of my favorites. Of Crit encryption is huge. Um, sure part of that. Algorithm and all that. So yeah. what, what's, uh, you know, I hear great things that will have um, the ability not to crack the encryption, new, new well, solutions. I mean, what do you, what's so your I, most of your audience, I think, probably understands it. For those who don't, most crypto is based on a problem that's easy to do one way and hard to do the other. And of course, quantum makes it easy to do both ways, right? So like multiplying large prime numbers versus factoring them, the product of them. Um, so really what we want to do is find problems that remain hard or ways of using math in a few different ways that make it difficult to reverse. And there's a, some really good candidates for that um, and some really good advances that have happened. NIST has been sponsoring a lot of those. There's some good commercial things available. But I think the most important thing that people can do to get ready right now is to be ready to swap out their, their, their libraries, right? You don't want to be caught flat footed and go, well, I don't have the option right now, <laughs> and so I'll just wait. No, 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 you can, you know, if, you, if you've if you ever been through what it's like to go to a FIPS 140 library, <laughs> then you know you want to be ready so yeah. that you can just be like, oh, just go change these files. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do the prep work. Do the prep work, you can do yeah. that right now and you can pay attention to the evolution of that technology, and as soon as it's ready, you can start to adopt it. Great to see you. I want to ask you what attracted to Zscale. Obviously, we've been covering them, and we love the company. Love Jay's a, a entrepreneur. He's an entrepreneur. He's very entrepreneur. Even as a big company, stock performance is obviously impressive. They're up there, always in the top leaderboard. Uh, so the financial results obviously shown that they've got business going on. Um, but technically, um, as the rebels start to rethink about this time we're moving into, what attracted you to Zscale, or what jumped off the page? It, it, for me, it, it really does boil down to three things. Uh, well, part, Jay is, of course, part of these three things because um, I've always loved him. He's uh, um, the first one is the company is an incredible company. The second is the, is the people. Um, I, I can't think of anyone I don't get along with. Um, my team is great. Uh, everyone I work with, but the technology has the ability to move the needle. And and I think I've, since I last saw you. I've lamented the fact that I constantly see the opponent getting better at what they do faster than we defenders. And uh, I've said this with previous companies as well. So I wake up and go, where do I apply myself today yeah. to change that? And Zscaler topped the list. You know, what can we do in the industry from a tech perspective? Yeah. What can I yeah. do? Yeah. Where can I go that, that could have an impact to change that equation? And Zscaler top the list for me. Well, it's great to have you back on theCUBE and hope to do more. And it's always great to get your big brain. Also, your experience and advice out there because you know these videos are free. We want to get the word out. And, and thanks for sharing on theCUBE here at Black Hat. Well, thanks for having well, me. It's good to be back. And summer camp for hackers. I love yeah. it. We're here. Hopefully it's not another 15 years. Right? <laughs> They're so. definitely partying like a summer camp. That's for sure. These, they know how to party. Um, you're watching theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.